right, it's time to, oh, that was so loud. Okay, it is time to do this voiceover, guys and girls. It is the Christmas video. I haven't uploaded for a while, and trust me though, it's not like I haven't been thinking about it. I've literally had no downtime for like the past week. I had one day where I had a little bit, but then it got taken up by somebody else. So yeah, I've really had no downtime. But anyways, it's the Christmas vlog. Merry Christmas, everybody, or happy holidays if you don't believe in Christmas, whatever. If you hear some vo noise in the background, it's because I'm back at home in Dallas. The laundry room is right next to my room. And my madre is doing some laundry right now. Now check this out. I don't do deadlifts anymore, anyways. Um, but I'm working out with my boy Josh, you know, because he's got he's got like a little bit off for the Christmas break. You know, he's a school teacher. He's got it off, and we're doing a back workout. But he's like, I want to do deadlifts first. So I was like, might as well screw it. You saw the 315 right there. And oh, by the way, we're doing sumos because we're like, oh, this was after we squatted the day before, where I randomly, I, like, I haven't squatted for a long time. We squatted the day before. I randomly did 315, like just out of nowhere because I was feeling pretty hyped. And this is the day after we decided to start off with some sumos because we we're just gonna do hamstrings and glutes. And Josh was like, let's just do some freaking sumos because he wanted to practice the deadlifting because he is a power lifter. So you saw the 315, then I went to 335, and then Josh kept pushing me to do more and more. So right here, 365 on the bar. Josh went to the restroom. I was kind of like, should I wait until he gets out? But he's probably taking a dump. It could take a really long time. Let's try 365. I've never done 365 sumo. Boom, smooth 365 pull without Josh coaching me because Josh was giving me a lot of tips and stuff. Um, we're going now to 385. Like that 365, that was already a PR for the sumo deadlift. Now going to 385. Had to put on the little strappies because you know my like, I had to strap on. Hands grip strength not that strong. I don't ever train grip strength, um, mostly because I can't have my forearms getting too tight for tennis because then my just elbow just gets injured or my wrist gets injured a lot from that. So um, yeah, anyways, now you can see right here, Josh is coaching me up a little bit, telling me, you know, really tighten that upper back, push that upper back into where your chest is lifting up because technique right here was super important, guys, like I'm saying. And one thing that I was doing on this day that's completely different, I don't know if you noticed, uh, you probably don't notice because I haven't done this in such a long time, but my stance is way wider than it used to be. My sumo deadlift stance used to not be that wide because I'm just not flexible, guys. So that's 385, right? Like I said, I'm not flexible, but Josh was like, no, you gotta like put your legs out there. You can do it. Like you'll get more flexible time or whatever. So this is my first time going that wide on the stance. Now that 385 just, just then that you saw me fail, um, it actually came up really fast, but I almost like tipped over. Like I would have face planted if I didn't just let go and try to drop the straps. Um, so that's why I didn't come up, but I was like, I was pretty annoyed because I was very freaking close to doing it. Like I freaking had it, uh, or I thought I had it because it came up really fast. But I thought one thing that was difficult about using the straps was I couldn't get that breath in at the top, you know, because with the straps, you're already bent over onto the bar. I need to try to breathe in from there and then lock in, which feels really strange. So I was like, well, let me just try without straps because then I can get my breath in or whatever. It feels a little more normal. But right there, like, yeah, my grip strength just sucks, you know. So we're back with the straps. This is the third attempt. I, I told Josh right before this one, this is my going to be my final attempt at 385. Freaking screw it. Yeah, so this has been pretty scuffed. I, this is like the third time I had to go back because my video clips got messed up a little bit somehow. It looks like my camera cut off at some point. But anyways, final attempt at 385. Let's get it in. Good looking like I'm locked in and loaded. It went up pretty fast. Look at that right there. As soon as I got to the top, I locked out for like half a second. And then it looked like my knees were bending outward. And that's what I'm talking to Josh about because I felt that a little bit. I felt like my calves were going to cramp, to be honest. And so I was talking about jo talking to Josh about that afterwards. We were talking about whether that was actually full locket. He believed it was, but I watched the clip back, and I was just like, man, like I got to the top and locked it out, but then after like half a second, my calves felt like they're going to cramp, and my knees started um, bending a little bit outwards. And so honestly, I didn't even count that. I was like, 385 was a fail. And then Josh was like, dude, screw it, do 395. And I was like, are you serious? I didn't even do 385 yet. But he was saying like, it went up pretty fast. And watching the clip, it did go up pretty fast. And I did get to the top and I could lock it out. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit about a complaining but right here. But, so notice, notice the ground. Look at the ground what I'm standing on, right? We got that wooden platform part in the middle. That's nice. But we got these two squishy rubber things on the outside, okay? And Look how part of my foot, my toes, 
they go over the wood and onto that squishy platform thing. Now the thing is, when the weight is there, and even when you press down with your toes, that squishy platform thing, it actually squishes down. So you're actually, your toes aren't even on the ground, which is obnoxious as hell. So right there you saw the 395 fail. Why did I fail right there? Josh is telling me technique, because my upper back was not locked in. I was not braced on that um, rep, and I kind of felt that before I went up. I don't know why I freaking tried it anyways, but like there's, there's literally no way because I was not tight at all. So here we're going, um, giving 395 a second attempt right here. And uh, I'm gonna like, in a second one before we start this, I'm just gonna let the clips play, like the audio from the actual clip play. And you can hear Josh giving me um, his tip. So let me just let him take the floor real quick. Okay, so you heard some of Josh's cues getting the chest up, etc. That's all to help me achieve the upper back tightness because that is what I fail at most right here, I think. Anyways, look at how many plates are on that bar. Holy crap, 445s. I've never attempted this in my life. This is kind of a, this is definitely a milestone for me to try four freaking plates. And what you don't see is that there's two fives on each side as well. So this is not 405, but it's 415. Josh was like, screw 405, go for 415. I was like, dude, but 405 is the milestone. That's the four play milestone. He's like, no, dude, it's going to get in your head. You did 395 and it didn't even look hard. Just do 415. I was like, you know what? I'm going to trust him. You know, he's my powerlifting discipline friend. I'm going to take his advice. Let's go for 415. Really trying to lock in that form. By the way, this platform freaking sucks because once you get to the top, your feet start sliding out because it's so slick. That's what I want to say about the wooden platform. Watch how it starts sliding because it's so dang slick. But anyways, we got that lockout 415. Absolutely ridiculous. The video is going to end here, guys. Like the video. See you in the next one. Peace.